Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. I am your host, Chanel Felix. Guys, this morning we're having a pretty interesting conversation. We're talking about what happens when you come back home and when you are willing and ready to contribute to Tobago's development. This morning we're talking to Daniel Vinson, who is also the founder of Extreme Fitness. Good morning, Daniel, and how are you doing? Good morning, Chanel. All right, now, you know, I, I saw you there on Sunday at the Capture the Flag event, and, you know, as we were catching up a bit, you know, I spent some time, you know, every time we see each other, we always ask, what's up, how are you doing, what are you doing, what are you up to? And it's good to know that you have taken the Trinidad and Tobago flag yet again to the United States where you are extending that extreme fitness brand. Talk to us a bit about where extreme fitness is now as it stands in the United States. <laughs> well, since I left, a lot has been going on. And first off, good morning. To Tobago, good morning to my family. Yes, to my daughter as well. She's watching this morning. So good morning, Ava. And to my sister with her hairline that's doing so good now. Love your hair, Caroline. So oh. good morning to her. So yes, I'm in New York now, doing so well. I always try my best not to leave Tobago because Tobago is home. Tobago is passion. Tobago is pride for me. But I had the offer from one of my mentors, who is John Padula. He's from Italy. He's US-based, New York-based, one of my high school mentors. And it turned out to now being one of the USATF New York coaches in New York for track and field, where we um, work with young, upcoming athletes who is preparing themselves for the Olympics, the Junior Olympics. And we have a few couple Caribbean athletes whose parents is from different various around that they are based in New York. So we are actually training them as well. So that's just one part of what I'm doing. Right. Well, um, you know, for me, I always love to see other young Tobagonians all over the globe doing great things. And that's why I felt like it was so important for, you know, you to give us an update on everything that's happening because you have been integral when it comes to sport development on the island of yeah. Tobago. You know, even in your own entrepreneurial pursuits, you have created a brand that has engaged Tobagonians on, you know, a fitness level, you know, um, from all age groups. Mm -hmm. So tell us how that has transformed into the coaching work that you're doing now and mm -hmm. how can that possibly, you know, feed into what is happening on the island of Tobago as it relates to development? Well, I haven't got to reach the secretary as yet, but I still plan to. But this time I'll be coming back with a different aspect where I'm bringing the team. It, I know everybody always likes to depend on the government. I'm not that type of person. If I come to you and we could make a progress for the youths, yeah. that's where I'm about. That's why I always push extreme to the level of where it goes. Like, um, for example, Mosi Dudun, who is controlling the YMCA swim athletes. I train them and there's so much excellence progress going on out of them even till today they mm -hmm. did well um a part of that well taking extreme to new york now it's now work well what we're working on is bringing the coaches to the island now oh okay. they always talk about how good i was doing and they always wanted to come and this is something that has been for decades now that i always wanted to introduce the new style technology, the craft of what sports is today. Now we have a young athlete that represents the USA, 16 years of age, running men time. That is amazing. Right. No time. Nobody never did that before. So by introducing the sports where you working on teaching new coaches how injuries could be prevented. Because I, can, I grew up in a time where it's just ice, going to see soak your muscles and you will recover mm -hmm. technology is ahead now we're using these social platforms flat screen tvs in our house i can't tell if somebody still have a back uh those big back tvs I mean, we but we got to move with change we got to move with time so this is where i'm now working step by step to get these programs out where we could do clinic programs teaching coaches how to prevent injuries the new craft of training and different style of training. And as long as the door is open, whether 
nobody wants to be on board, I will still go to the different clubs and organizations because right. we have a lot of But I know the that currently there is a program called I Choose Sport TT under the Ministry of Sport, which um, is overseen by the Minister Shampo Kajo. Mm -hmm. And so that may be a great opportunity for collaboration and conversation. And again. From what I know of Shampo, yeah. she's always willing to collaborate with me well, on these type of projects. For the past, I've been knocking on every single door, not bashing any political, I guess you know as a man of faith you know god always have a timing for every chapter to open a door and once that door opens i'm going to step in and do what i have to do now that i'm outside with the resources that i'm having and not only coaching i'm also a teacher now i, I was trying my best not to go into the teaching i'm teaching physical education in a high school now I, right. I was trying my best but eventually that was the direction i had to go as well so it's not just only coaching and then you now extreme is also abroad in new york where i'm training so much clientele different country different aspect and oh i love tobago right yeah. and then there's a new secretary for yes community development exactly. sport and um yes, youth development boy, right and I had a conversation with him just yesterday, and he is very open to very working well with the youth. He said that he has an open door policy, yes, he and does. he is willing to do the type of collaboration. So I believe that it's important for you know when we have young persons who are doing their own thing privately, right. you know, to contribute to youth development as well as sport development, mm -hmm. that the collaborations come about. And he indicated that he's very yes. much open we to had collaboration. A brief, we had a brief convo while we were at Capture the Flag which was great. So I do plan to see him before I leave because I was even explaining with kids now in sports in the U.S. on a whole, every sporting aspect, you have to do a medical checkup before any child competed any sports. We don't do that here because we're going to just, oh, our child could run, they could play basketball. And then when you put them out there and something happened, you never know what could happen to a child. Right. And also we have a lot of um, sports doctors who are here on the island, which I see like Dr. Kevin Ford and so much more, Romati, they are highly engaged to be on board where we could actually start doing sporting clinics. And you don't have to add any extra money to it because they're already getting paid by the THA. Mm -hmm. So they could actually start a clinic where we direct sporting athletes to prepare them in a safer aspect than you just telling kids, you heard, take a rest. Mm -hmm. They're still engaged. You could you could still train right, right, and right. recover. And so do that's therapy. a whole new aspect of the sport Correct. that has gone a bit Excel. unnoticed. Yes, that's what Jamaica is doing right now. And right. everybody loves seeing how Jamaica is competing. And they're from the Caribbean just like us. Right. We could have the same resources as long as they have the passion to open that door for everyone. We could make progress. Understood. And now, when it comes to extreme fitness, everybody knows we look forward to that yearly, you know, hype. Yes. We look forward to being pushed to our <laughs> limits every year. Talk to us about what that um, extreme fitness hike is looking like this year. Um, you know, are you looking for partners? Um, well, what can we expect from this year's well, extreme fitness hike? I actually put out a, a, a brochure for 2025 because of so much was going on this year i had to put a pause on it and right. i know the hike brought so much to tobago the impact from having 89 people one baby and a dog to where the last one we had had over 500 people so i said because of so much going on this year i'm gonna focus on next year where i might bring it back for the good friday or i will actually bring it within the summertime of no Right. And so what is happening there that is causing us not to get a hike this year? Because, I mean, there is the October Carnival coming up. And yes. I feel like that's an excellent opportunity, well, not only for locals, but for individuals visiting the island to be a part of a great experience. Now, and... since if Donny could have split himself in four persons, I don't even want to. Four, <laughs> it could have happened within a blink of eye. Because when I'm not here, I'm like, I'm the engine room to, to my baby, right. to extreme. Now that... I'm at somewhere else where the service is different. I just can't run home right. because I like to be on hands-on to make sure everything is good. I want to make sure that, like the hike, 
when everybody comes in, hey, the porridge is here, which stand from porridge now is a big thing. I actually introduced it to New York right. slowly and now it's getting there. I just want everybody to enjoy themselves. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm in New York and this going on here and Daniel is not here. Because right. I saw that for the carnival. I saw my whole face on a brochure and I'm like, wait, big carnival and Daniel is in Tobago. Understood. <laughs> but you know, um, I think the height of entrepreneurship and business success is being able to create a brand and a business that yes. can run you know, without you being mm -hmm. there all the time. So we hope that that is where Extreme is heading we, to. We are, but they still miss, they still miss, even in the workouts, then you're not getting the same drive, like, oh, you're there. And I'm like, but the other trainers and them are good as well. Yeah. But, you know, everybody gravitate to somebody different because, you know, you might have a different approach to someone and that's where it is. But regardless, the train's still moving. So... Excellent. Well, we look forward to the 2025 version of that Extreme Fitness hike. And what else can we see coming from that Extreme Fitness brand? Oh, I have a lot. I'll just put them out in spotlight. But um, we do, I, right so far, I'm actually discussing some investors outside to do a different launch. But we're not ready to put that out yet. Right. But yeah. it's more pertaining to fitness and for Tobago especially. And as long as where I am, I'm always putting Tobago on the map. I always highlight Tobago, even in my social platforms. I like to use the slogan that I love Tobago. Because right. small place, big pride. That right. is our island. That's my drive for Tobago, even different cultures. Because now I'm in a school where we recently went to South Korea, which was one of my first time and experience with the school. And... Now meeting these different cultures now, and you're telling people I'm from Tobago. The first thing people used to say is Trinidad. No, it's Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. So now highlighting Tobago, people doing the history behind Tobago. And it's now an enlightenment to visit. Mm -hmm. So shout out to all my friends who's coming down with me for the carnival this year. I'm not missing it this year. So I'm having a whole team coming with me this year. Right. Well, when we look forward to whatever events Extreme Fitness decides to put on, you know, and bringing out this stand from porridge, you know, that's a staple here on the island of Tobago. Every exactly. Saturday morning, we come, we <laughs> buy our porridge from Extreme Fitness. Yes. Um, now, you indicated that you have sort of function of an as an ambassador to Tobago when you travel the world, mm -hmm. specifically for sport and fitness and youth development. Um, are you willing to be an active ambassador on any type of ambassadorial program that comes from diaspora engagements on the island? Yes. And do you see that there's a need to engage members of the diaspora to be ambassadors for the island? Yes, definitely, hands down. Once it comes to youth and sports, I am number one driven to be on board for it because there's a lot of talented kids on this island that need the guidance. I'm grateful that I had Mr. Gerald Franklin, Mr. Sosa, and so 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 many others who contributed, Mr. Devines. They did so much to Tobago. Why not share the knowledge until my time is gone? Right, okay. excellent. Well, we wanna thank you so much for, um, for, for being a part of this discussion. And I do you have friends in the diaspora that are, are willing to do just as you are doing? Well, there's other different fitness organizations that does well, you know, but we all might have different ideas and platform, but I must say the Extra Jam, which was the carnival um, launch that with Dose Fit, Marcel Fitness, the all other organizations, Chubbs, everyone, they had a great tunnel, which I was there present that everyone got to share the stage. And I do hope that they continue. Whether I'm not there or not, I'm still always supporting and engaging it mm -hmm. because it's something good to promote health and fitness where you can bring our families, friends, and not just is a fitness thing. You don't have to be fit to be in shape, to be supportive. Like, you remember the last hike you did? Yeah, I, I triple <laughs> real. You know, I really was not in no. tip-top shape, but I, I finished. Yeah, you finished And it. that is so important I, because, you know, persons just want the motivation to start. Exactly. Because once you start, you can finish. And that's that, that was one of the biggest things that mm -hmm. you promoted when you had the extreme um, fitness hike. You yeah. know, you always said just start. 
Not because sweet. once you start, you know, you will find people that yeah. are on your level mm -hmm. and you just automatically create groups yeah. that of people who you may not know that just begin supporting you and telling you, you know, come on, come on, we all have to finish yeah. it. And the scenery was a, a, a top class right. of the event. The scenery is that it was so nice to, every year because I change the trail every year. And it was so nice to see people it was like, hi, it have houses in Culloden. Yeah. I could see Golden Lane. I could see the, the view of Scarborough and Pigeon Point. These are the things that people are supposed to like get to know that it's not just uh, going Crown Point or going Charlottesville. It's so much more to Tobago. It's just that we have to put it out there so people could see that Tobago is really a beautiful place. Because I've traveled a lot of Caribbean places and it's nothing compared to Tobago. <laughs> We totally agree. Um, now, when it comes to some of the partnerships that you have created in the United States mm -hmm. and creating opportunities for other young persons through these partnerships, help us to understand how, you know, bringing coaches to Tobago and bringing scouts to Tobago mm -hmm. would help to contribute to that youth and sport development. And who are some of the clubs now, that you look forward to partnering now with? with? For the sporting aspects like the track and field clubs, well, I'm also a member of Zenith Athletics Club, which is all Birdstone. Yeah. So even although we have Mr. Alan Morrison and everyone, we have coaches in the States who always contact, hey, who is a good athlete running and so forth. Now, the main podium for that platform is Crafter Games. And character, character Games is a bigger level for attention for every coach to look and see the potential of what their athletes and them are doing mm -hmm. to get that scholarship. Like, for example, Anson, Anson Moses. Everyone knows Anson mm -hmm. is an entertainer by himself, but he's passionate when it comes to track and field. And I'm one of the person who was behind the back room, just Anson, stay focused, go to school. You have a lot of potential. Don't stay here. Don't just limit your expectations of just being in Tobago because there's so much more outside to see than just mm -hmm. come home, hang on the block. And I love his driven passion for track. And also he connects to people in a different way that he excels his friends on them. And I'm so proud of him. So I can say shout out to Anson this morning. Right. Yeah. And when it comes to community work and community engagement you are from the village of, of plymouth, plymouth right yes and we have a lot of amazing athletes coming out of plymouth as well mm -hmm. as athletes giving back to plymouth you know we see um miss karen she mm -hmm. has kick it with karen, karen. Paul, kick with karen. karen we have year. the stoke Vic club we have the others in the community so what i normally do when i do an extreme event i go to every agent every community service part of this community and like we had this event that i did call um fit on the road where instead of just passing through the community i did a platform by every single um sponsored organization where we were at steve which is one of the main supermarkets we had best buy in the village we had stumpy mm -hmm. so all these people in the community once i've had the support from them and then we still give a club which is a club where my dad was a manager there and they have the kids in them who now Cordell Joe Fields is a manager mm -hmm. so now we work with them now with providing things for school um they might need a cleat so these are the part where we'll give back to that and also I have the back road crew which is young men in Plymouth mm -hmm. where we go around sometimes and just help people who might need a bench or steps in a yard fix but, you know, not everything have to go on social media to say, hey, we did this or we did that. Understood, understood. Yeah. So we can contact Extreme Fitness when it comes to those community engagement yes. events that you have. On and I'm always basis. doing for, like, the school drives. Well, like, the schools always want the, like, the warm-up and the aerobics and these things. So we always go on board because we did with ROC. We did with most of the schools and I'm in Plymouth. Also, shout out to Signal Hill Primary School. Although I'd not there any Happy Haven School, we are always engaged to help them. Excellent. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back right after this as we continue our conversation with Mr. Extreme Fit, Donnie Vincent. See you soon. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. I am Chanel Felix, and this morning I have been chatting with Mr. Extreme Fitness, Daniel Vincent, and we're talking about youth development and sport development in 
Tobago. Some of his connections that he's made throughout his travel and career journey and how he is using those connections to help to develop Tobago's sport. Now, a lot of parents are watching this morning, a lot of grandparents watching, and they want to know how can they begin to push their young you know, kids into a career sport? How can they push them into being career athletes? It doesn't matter what field it is in, but you know, how do they begin that journey of pushing them into becoming career athletes? Now, <laughs> being a parent myself, and yes, I have a six-year-old daughter, don't force them into the sport that you think you were good at. <laughs> Let them, yeah, I'll say that again. Don't force them into the sport that you were talented at. They will find their own sport. And as long as they find their own sport, then you could be number one supporter engaging them. But you still have to teach them the principle of the winning, the losing, and not quitting. Because I know I found my own sport because, yes, I used to play football. I used to do track and field, but track and field was more fashionable. The coaches and them behind me was like, hey, I think you should put aside the football. And I'm grateful to say track and field took me to where I am for today. Mm -hmm. So whatever your sport is, but it's football, track, volleyball, netball. And now these lovely devices that we have today, one video upload can make so much a difference today with using sports because now everybody's using technology where your child could be the most talented kid in swimming and one video could have a coach from France or England or wherever just engage to see this child and then they will reach out. All right, so when it comes to helping to develop our kids into career at least for the parents who desire to see that from their kids, do you recommend putting them in a number of sporting activities and see what they do good at? Do we narrow it down to five, <laughs> to three? Um, and what, what strategies do you think we should implement when, um, you know, trying to get the kids to become professional? Well, putting them in the different various sport first to see where their capabilities are first and then you have to listen to the coach right listen to the coach because that's the coach's job that's his profession these parents sometimes believe the coach might say one thing and they'll have their riffraff and if the coach say hey i don't think he might be a good runner <laughs> to run 100 meters but he might be good running the four and the 800 right because I see how his strides are, I could see how his endurance and strength when he competes in this event. But don't pull the child out now and then take him to a different coach mm -hmm. and come with your directions and letting this coach know things because most that time you want coach, him to be you saying both. Correct. Because most coach will do is find out from the previous coach what occurred. And I guess this coach might have a different perspective to relate to the parent on how to get that child but we need to work on as well as uh i think in colombia they do it where they have this program like what we do now for the summer program mm -hmm. where different various sports in different like the stadium and so forth that the coaches who are at these locations should be taking notes of oh this child is good in cycling this child is good as track, football, netball, and then you reach out to the parent. Make sure they do the, the full procedure steps down. Make sure they get the medical checkups because I'm, I'm keen in on this one mm -hmm. because I've seen kids many times where they did cross country for schools here in Tobago and they ran and pass out. Right. And you want to prevent these things early. Mm -hmm. And then they make sure that they have the chiropractor, the physiotherapist that as long as they keep training, you have them go into these programs. That's why I told you earlier, we need to have the uh, medical clinic that we could send kids mm -hmm. in, whether they're injured, they hurt, we could deal with them early so they could be back on track. 
and then get sponsors on board, not just begging the government that government we need this, having the main private sectors who are big to put a logo on their t-shirt, advertise their branding. So you're just not going to ask for money and then some might not even use the money for the sport. So we really need these things to get things on. Okay, totally agree. Um, no, let's let's shift a bit to scholarships and scholarship program because you have seen a number of athletes go yeah. from a beginner so, to professional mm -hmm. and not just professional but profitable professionals. Yeah. So what type of opportunities do you think are presented or are you trying to create to stimulate more scholarships for students on the island and working along with the clubs, the football clubs, the running clubs, to make sure that those opportunities are readily available. Now, as much as we love sports, you have to go with academics. Mm -hmm. It goes hand in hand. You're a student athlete. They said student before the athlete. Mm -hmm. So you have to represent yourself in academics. One thing I learned while, because I, although I went to Scarborough Sec, I went to high school in New York. Yeah. And uh, till to this day, what I'm so happy to see with schools in the States, once you're doing track and field as a student athlete, you have to at least keep a 2.0 GPA. Right. If you don't pass that 2.0 GPA, you cannot compete in no sports. You have to go to tutoring until you get back your grades up and this is one thing that we need to focus on especially in the island and in education for student athletes and not having teachers in my time just used to say go out and run you're fast you're gonna reach fast no because today or tomorrow a child might have injuries what are they what are they gonna fall back on they need to fall back on the academics now with the academics yes you might have the talent in the sport this is where your status could bring and also i have to see the secretary on this that we need to have a sport portal for every school that every competition every competition that they go you have stats of these kids on this website right. that i could pull up a student name i could see what his Ooh. credentials are and you could forward it to a coach Right, these right. are the things that we I need know, to I have. know that because sometimes, you know, some of the athletes, you just log yeah. in their name on Google and you see all of the big have, uh, meets that they yeah. competed in, what they placed and, you know, what so, their stats yeah. are. So the only thing for that is most time is like character games that you will see status for kids who are in the character games. But also you really need it for high school. Because if you have it in high school, although a student might not reach to the character level, he still have potential that a coach could literally take this student out and carry him on. And also we have to focus on the SATs as well because I went to a school where they did SAT prep. Yeah. Not wait until you reach fourth form, but third form. Okay. So you start preparing early. So having those private... Having good SAT scores, right. having good academics, and you now with your trump card as being a, a good athlete, can take your further and you could also the parents as well could even send emails to the various schools to the coaches because that's how sports work most parents email the coach then the coach from your club telling you hey um i need this student here start early you put these things out early the coach gonna literally take a check okay let me see what this athlete is about oh he runs 21 5 in a 200 he runs 46 he didn't make the character team but he came fifth. Right. So I could take this student now and bring him up there and things could go from there. Well, I mean, such great ideas and it would be a shame to not see them implemented, especially with all the work that you are doing in your private capacity mm -hmm. with extreme fitness, even as you are, you know, going from school to school and coaching different students yeah. and even having that global exposure. So much of that information, so much of that experience can be translated into effective sport development policy yep. here. And so I really hope that after our conversation that you take a little trek up to the office of the oh, Secretary, yeah, Mr. Um, Joel Thompson, and sure. continue that conversation because 
everything that you spoke about, I think that it's extremely yes. needed in the we need it. space. We definitely Specifically need it. when it comes to the youth development, especially at the high school level where you now begin only, to see the... Not only high school, just primary school and right. all. Because they don't wait till high school. People wait till you're in primary school because I'm so amazed to see the talent of these kids today now is they, they have it natural. Mm -hmm. They have it so natural. They, they're so gifted now that you don't have to wait. Till, oh, you're in high school now? No, start them early. So you prepare them as they get to the high school. They know what to do. And then as they get into high school, it's college. Because mm -hmm. as you know, most parents in our time will be like, oh, go to fifth form and repeat. Mm -hmm. Or go to sixth form because some parents believe that you're not ready to be independent by yourself mm -hmm. to go to that college life and... and engage in a different atmosphere because we know how college is right but how do you encourage you know parents to kind of release that hold you know that they have on the kids well because i know specifically mm -hmm. of parents who were presented with opportunities for their children to go away and study on scholarships and stuff and they said well you know to be honest he's only 17 I don't think that he's ready to go to the United States by himself on his own. He doesn't have any family there, you know, anything like that, you know. It's hard to release well, the kids. I was there. I went to school in Kansas. So it's confining in the parent, one, trusting in the coach. And the parent as well could take a visit to see what the school have to engage for your child or children. And as long as, like, again, with the contract, of being a student athlete because you don't want to go there, embarrass your parents, waste that scholarship money, and then you hear you fail and then they post it back on a plane. Because mm. I've seen coaches did that already in tutus. Hey, you don't want to follow my directions? Okay. You could go back to your country. A next student who is more determined and wanted more will get that opportunity. Right. And so so you were in Kansas on your own at what I age? Was Kansas, I was what, 16? Wow. I was Kansas on my own, but I knew what I was focused on accomplishing. And I didn't want that West Indian part of my mother to come out. Right, understood. <laughs> so, <laughs> understood. So, totally understood. Exactly. You don't even have to go into any details yeah. there. We, we, we know exactly yeah, what exactly. that means. But this morning, we want to thank you for this discussion. And uh, is there anything else that you want to be going in to look out for from you? Um, I don't have much. But I'll just say shout out to my brother this morning because okay. he's... Now in Tobago, doing a, a brand called Poop Roots, where okay. he's bringing that Tobago natural cultural culinary art dish, which he's a chef. Right. And uh, he's doing good. So he's doing a ghost kitchen in New York. Okay. So he actually had it as called Sip on Wine, where he used the hibiscus bird as the impl implement of branding Tobago. Right. And like Shy, who everybody know braided. Mm -hmm. I actually work and train Shy personnel since right. I'm up there. The networking of Tobagonans is doing so good in New York. Like Jace, Mr. Franklin's son, who has right. Jace Barbecue. Like, when I'm in New York, is like the connection of every single body. Like, hey, right. don't we hear? I have, um, I met, which was shocking, one of my high school classmates who is pushing the civil rights for petty crimes when like marijuana charges he actually introduced the bill to new york state wow and, and he's at tobagonians and he's at tobagonians wow and so, tobagonians that are doing really big well. things specifically really well. in new york where you are mm -hmm. at the moment and we look forward to even hearing more about those brands and exactly. about how tobagonians are making their mark internationally um, again, thank you so much for coming on Thanks this morning having and having this and discussion. And I mean, it's sad that we don't get to hike this year, but next year, we guess we it's going to be bigger, better. We may yes. have to prepare the trail for more than a that, thousand. That's the next thing to More than a thousand persons. So we, we, we look forward to that. And you know, by that time, I know I'm going to be in tip Fit. top shape, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we want to thank you so much for this discussion this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting and doing all that you have been doing to make Tobago Update the number one broadcaster here on the island of Tobago. Again, shout out to the Extreme Fitness brand. 
and all the other subsidiaries of that brand, mm -hmm. um, all the, the hair care, skin care brands, Every you know, brand. that come out from the Vincent family. Shout out to you guys this morning doing all that you are doing to contribute to lifting the name of Tobago and all Tobagonians around the world that are doing something within your own space, within your own sphere, within your own field to wave the Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago flag, but specifically bigging up Tobago. Um, yep. We want to thank you this morning, right? So guys, see you soon. Have a great day and we look forward to much more conversation with you very soon. Big updates. Not a